Welcome back to the commonly used Excel charts and functions video series. Today in lesson six, our focus will be on bar charts. Just as a reminder before you start watching, we suggest watching each video twice, just watching through the first time and then watching and following along the second. All right, so the focus of today's lesson is gonna be on the bar chart, but you may remember from lesson five, we went over the column chart. Column charts and bar charts are very similar to one another. Their main difference is basically just their orientation. So today we'll also be looking at when it's most appropriate to use a column chart versus a bar chart. As you can see on the left-hand side here, I have a data set that is the Canadian population in 2020 um, sorted by province. You might notice that the Canadian uh, territories are missing from this data set, but we've just excluded them today uh, for simplicity purposes. Let's start by highlighting our uh, data labels as well as the data and go to the insert tab. I'm gonna go to my column choices and then just select the clustered column choice. Now, when I look at the X axis of this graph, you can see that all of our province names are on an angle. This means that we have to tilt our head to read them. It takes a while to read them and they're just not pretty on our graph. Let's make a bar chart out of the same data set to see if it's any better. Go to insert again, select that same column choice, but this time go down to the 2D bar header and select the clustered bar choice. I'm going to move it to the right of the column chart here so we can do a comparison between the two. So you can see by moving the province names onto the Y axis, they're able to be straight instead of angled, which makes them easier to read. One problem that I noticed though on the right hand side is that Prince Edward's Island, which is our smallest population, is at the top of the graph, and Ontario, which is our largest population, is at the bottom of the graph. When making a bar chart, it's an important rule of thumb to keep in mind that the largest values go at the top and the smallest values go at the bottom just for aesthetic purposes. So let's change um, the ascending and descending order that we have in this chart here. If we look at the data set that we made the bar chart out of, you can see that our data was sorted um, descending. Now I have the data set again, instead of sorting ascending this time. So let's highlight our data labels as well as the data, go to the insert tab and select again that clustered bar choice. So there you go. You can see by assorting our data in an ascending manner instead of descending, Ontario, which is our largest value, is at the top, and Prince Edward Island, which is our smallest value, is now at the bottom. There are a couple ways I can improve this graph still, and the first one is going to be the title. I'm just going to add 2020 in front of that population label, just so that it's a bit more descriptive. If we look at the bottom where our x-axis uh, intervals are, all those repeating zeros kind of clutter our graph. So let's double click on them and go to the right hand side here where it says display units. I'm going to select this drop down box and select millions and you can see those zeros disappeared and instead it's noted that all those numbers are in millions, which makes the graph just a bit easier to read. Now that we have all three, let's do a comparison between all of them. So you can see again, the main difference between a column chart and a bar chart is their orientation. The bar chart is much easier to read when your axis labels are long, and it's important to remember that the chart with the biggest value displayed first always looks better. All right, so you can see now we have a new data set that we are going to work with, which is a 2021 profit organized by category. This time we're gonna go over how to format the labels differently as well as change the colors of the bars when making a bar chart. You'll remember just a couple moments ago when we made our first bar chart, we said it was a rule of thumb to follow that you put your larger values at the top of the bar chart and your smaller values towards the bottom of the bar chart. In other words, we said to do this, your data had to be sorted in an ascending order. If we look at the current state of our data set, you can see that's not the case. We have it currently sorted in a descending order. To change it to ascending, what we're going to do is just highlight our data values themselves 
and go up to the top where in the right hand side and select this sort and filter button. I'm going to select custom sort and make sure you have the expand the selection circle highlighted and press the sort button. The only column you need to worry about is this order drop down box and we're going to select smallest to largest and then press OK. Now our data is sorted in the correct order, so let's make the bar chart now. I'm going to highlight my data, go to the Insert tab, and then again go to the 2D bar options and select that clustered bar choice. You can see, and you'll probably notice right away, that some of the category labels or the labels along the y-axis are actually covered up by the bars. And that's because the last three categories, which are appliances, bookcases, and labels, have negative profit for the year. So they're actually going the opposite direction um, on the y-axis. To improve the legibility of these labels, we're going to double click on them and go to the right hand side here. We're gonna scroll down and expand the labels menu. We scroll down again, you can see there's an option to change the label positioning with a drop down menu. Click that arrow and you can see there's a couple options that we can choose from. Let's try low first. So you can see by choosing low, the labels were moved to the left hand side. That looks pretty good, but let's try the other ones as well. Let's try high this time. You can see that moves it to the right hand side. That's okay, definitely not as good as low, um, but let's try the last option. None. You can see that gets rid of those labels altogether, which isn't what we want, so let's stick with low for this time. Another way we can improve this graph is by changing the title to make it a bit more detailed. So again, I'm going to add just my year in front of that profit label that we already had there. And then the last change I'm going to make is actually to the colors of the bars. I know we've touched on this a couple times, and that is whenever you're working with gains and losses, you should be choosing warm and cool colors. Warm colors traditionally represent losses, where cool colors represent gains. Since appliances, bookcases, and tables all had losses in 2021, let's change them to a warm color. To do this, let's double click on um, our bars and go to the right hand side here where the paint can is. I'm going to select this box that says invert if negative, which will prompt me to choose two colors, one color for all my positive values, which will be my blue for my gains, as well as another color for my losses, which will be my warm color. So I'm gonna go invert if negative. Our first color is going to be blue for the gains. And then our second color is gonna be kind of this burnt dark red for the losses. And there we go, our graph is done. All right, so you're probably wondering, should we always use a bar chart instead of a column chart? Let's look at another example. Again, on the left-hand side here, I have a new data set, which is sales in 2021 organized by month. In lesson four, we explained that whenever you want to illustrate a trend over time, it's best to use a line chart. Just as a quick refresher of lesson four, let's make a line chart with this data set. I'm going to highlight all my data, go to the Insert tab, and select the 2D line option. And remember, just like we've been doing with all the other graphs today, we're going to add the year in front of our title to make it more descriptive, and then add the axis titles um, as well to make the graph freestanding. So our x-axis will be month, and our y-axis will be 2021 sales. Now you can also use bar charts and column charts with this data set, so let's try making those as well. I'm actually going to take a copy of our data set, so I'm just going to highlight everything like I normally would if I was going to make the chart. I'm going to right click and press the copy button. I'm going to move over to the side of our line chart, just select a cell, right click again, and then just press the normal paste option. All right, now that we have our data set, let's try making that bar chart. So I'm gonna highlight, go to insert, 
and again select that clustered bar option we've been using throughout the video. If I move it to the side, you can see that our months are going from December to January. This doesn't make a lot of sense because the calendar year goes to, from January to December. So let's try and sort our data differently so that we can have our months going in the correct order. I'm going to highlight this and delete this one to get it out of our way. The first thing I'm going to do is try to sort our months by alphabetical order. So let's just highlight our month names and go up to the top right hand side here where it says sort and filter. I'm going to select the custom sort option and then make sure you have that expand the selection circle highlighted and press sort. This time you're going to be uh, concerned about the column that's the sort by drop down menu. Select that arrow and make sure you select month this time since we want to sort alphabetical. You can see it was automatically set A to Z, so we're good to go and we can press OK. So you can see that sorted my month names in alphabetical order. All right, let's try and make that bar chart again. I'm going to go back to insert and then insert that same clustered bar option. So you can see this is even worse now. The months are in a totally random order. So let's delete this and let's actually delete the entire data set here and we'll recopy our actual data set uh, so we can do a fresh start. So again, I just highlighted everything, pressed copy, I'm gonna select a random cell and then right click again and then just press that paste button. The correct way to sort your data is to actually add another column to the left of your month column and that column is going to be month number and I'm just going to call it month num for short. So we're going to insert our data. So January will be month one, February will be month two, March will be month three and so on. You can enter in the first couple of months, highlight your data and then drag down from the bottom right hand corner and Excel will auto fill in the rest of the numbers. Now that we have those month numbers, we can use the month numbers to sort our data. So let's just highlight those month numbers, go to again that sort and filter option at the top right hand corner and custom sort again. Make sure the expand the selection circle is again selected and press sort. This time we're going to want to sort by our column that is month number and we'll want our order to be largest to smallest this time press OK. All right, so now our data should be in the correct order, so we can make the correct bar chart now. Let's just highlight our month and sales headers as well as the data and ignore the month number column that we just added. Go to the insert tab, the bar options, and then again select that same clustered bar choice we've been working with. I'm just going to move it to the side here. And now you can see that our months are in the correct order from January to December. Just like we did with the other graphs, let's edit the title just to make it a bit more descriptive and then add those axis titles as well. This time our bottom X axis will be 2021 sales and the Y axis will be month. All right, now that we have the bar chart made, let's make the column chart. We can use our original data set to use, make the column chart. So again, let's just highlight all our data, go to the insert tab, and then select that clustered column choice. I'm just gonna move it down to the bottom here. You can see our months are in the correct order, January to December, which is what we want. So this one, again, we're also gonna add that 2021 in front of our sales title, and then add the access titles as well. This time our X axis will be month and our Y axis will be 2021 sales. All right, now that we have all three of these graphs made, let's do a comparison between the three to see which one is better. All right, so I have a copy of the three charts that we just made a moment ago, and I'm actually gonna zoom out a bit so we can see them all at the same time. But the biggest difference you'll notice is that the column chart in the middle and the bar chart um, at the end, they have lines drawn on them now um, that match the endpoints of each of the columns or bars. 
If we look at the column chart in the middle here, you can see that that line that I drew keeps the same shape as the line chart. So it's easy to see the dips and the peaks over 2021. But if we look at the bar chart on the end here, you can see that that line doesn't keep the same shape because the orientation is different. As a result, it's a lot harder to see the dips and peaks over time. Therefore, that brings us to another rule of thumb to keep in mind, is that if you ever want to compare data points over time, it is always best to use a line chart or a column chart, but never a bar chart. Let's look at one more example. All right, so we have our last data set of the day on the left hand side here, which is a sales and profit um, by quarter. So that means we have two target measures in this data set now, which is sales and profit, and only one dimension per target measure, which is quarter. This will be a quick review of what we went over in lesson five, which uh, mainly focused on column charts. If you look on the left hand side, we have a column chart and on the right hand side, we have a bar chart. Now you might be wondering which one looks better. And it is the one on the left hand side here, which is the uh, column chart. So this is just another quick example of when it's better to use a column chart over a bar chart. All right, let's do a quick review before we wrap up for the day. In today's lesson, we learned how to create bar charts and when it was most appropriate to use them. The first graph that we made is on the left hand side, which is the Canadian population in 2020. And here we learned it was most important to use bar charts when your labels are long because it allows the labels to be straight instead of angled, which makes them easier to read. The second graph we made is um, on the bottom left hand corner here, and that is when we were highlighting our negative profit with a dark red warm color. The last uh, example that we dealt with is when you're using a data set about trends over time. It's best to either use a line chart or a column chart, but never a bar chart. Thank you for watching and tune into our next lesson where we will be going over the scatter plot.